السلام عليكم A while back an Egyptian atheist by the name of Sharif Gaber has made a video trying to debunk the scientific miracles in the Quran and the Sunnah of which he has made a criticism towards the hadith that mentioned that there are 360 joints in the human body he also mentions a video made by Dr. Nikita Vizniak who mentions there are 472 joints in the human body myself as a medical student I found that interesting and so I looked into the list made by Dr. Nikita Vizniak and immediately I understood the confusion Dr. Nikita Vizniak was using the modern definition of a joint, which includes both mobile and immobile joints, joints that allow movements and joints that do not allow movement. However, I propose that what the Arabs and the Prophet Muhammad himself understood by joint was not how we in the modern age define joint. The Arabs at the time of the Prophet understood joints more accurately and more specifically as two articulations between two bones that allow movement. And therefore, we should actually see if there are 360 mobile joints in the human body or if there isn't. Dr. Nikita Vizniak put both of them in the same list. What we should do however is list only the mobile joints not the immobile joints. But before I begin I have to mention something very important. Even if we say that the number 360 that is mentioned in the hadith is actually scientifically inaccurate does that necessarily mean that Islam is therefore false? Well I would say no. Even if it was shown that the number was was actually incorrect. We as Muslims understand that the Prophet peace be upon him in multiple hadiths actually speaks from his own worldly knowledge which may be true or false and not actual knowledge that comes from a divine source or revelation. Multiple hadiths prove this like the one shown here. However let me be clear a prophetic hadith by default comes from revelation. The only way we can say that it's valid to interpret this hadith as something that was taken from the Prophet's own worldly knowledge which can be right or wrong is in two scenarios or two cases. Firstly, if the hadith does not mention God or does not mention any divine revelation which the hadith of the 360 joints definitely doesn't mention that the number he mentioned was taught to him by God himself. And the second case is if the narration mentions something that we know for a fact observably that it is 100% false. If these two cases have been met Therefore, it's completely valid for us to interpret such a hadith in a way that it's actually coming from the Prophet's own worldly knowledge and not from his divine revelation. Now, of course, I do not believe that the number 360 is scientifically inaccurate. That's the whole point of the video. However, I'm mentioning this as a sort of plan B, that even if I'm wrong about my assessment of the 360 joint number, even then, Islam would not be false and the hadith would not prove that Islam is less true in any way, shape or form. So, so after saying all of this, let's begin. Firstly, let's mention why we think the word joint in this hadith is talking about most probably the mobile joints and not the immobile joints. There are two answers to this. Firstly, back then the Arabs didn't really have the amount of knowledge that we today have in anatomy. Therefore, when you talk to them about the joints, they most probably understand it in terms of the shoulder joint, the finger joints, the knee joint, other joints that allow movement. They wouldn't, for example, think that the skull is made of multiple joints and multiple separate bones fused together in immobile joints. They would think that the skull is one singular bone. So that's the first answer. The second answer is that in another version of the hadith, the hadith uses the word sulama. Now sulama means the finger bones or finger joints. Imam Nawawi explains this word that it means joints and not bones. And Imam Khattabi in another version of the hadith that does not mention the number 360 but mentions the same event, he says that what is meant by sulama is not the finger bones or the bones of the fingers of the hands and the feet. Rather, it's every joint that allows for movement between the two bones. And of course, in multiple Arabic lexicons, a joint is a point of connection between two bones. Therefore, what we have is that the understanding of a 7th century Arab to the word joint is a connection between two bones that allows for motion between them. 
and allows for the movement of the body. That is what joint is for the Arabs, and that is what they understood from the Prophet peace be upon him. Therefore the Prophet when talking to them obviously would use the definition that they were familiar with, not a definition that they did not understand or did not know. Therefore that means we will only be counting the mobile joints, because that's what the Arabs understood by the word joint. Joints are functionally classified into three categories, the diarthrosis joints, arthrosis joints, and the synarthrosis joints. The diarthrosis joints are the joints that allow free movement. They have a very wide range of motion. Notable examples of the diarthrosis joints is the shoulder joint, ankle joint, elbow joint, etc. The amphiarthrosis joints are the joints that allow only slight movement. In other words, they do allow movement, however it's not as big or as wide in terms of range of motion as the diarthrosis joints. Notable examples of these types of joints are the intervertebral joints, the joints between the vertebra. And lastly, there are the synarthrosis joints, or the immobile joints. These are joints that don't allow any type of movement. Notable examples of these joints are the joints between the bones of the skull and the joints between the teeth and the jaw. As we said, we would be only counting the mobile joints and we will be completely disregarding the quote-unquote joints that don't allow any type of movement because of the reasons we already mentioned earlier in the video. In short, we will be counting only the diarthrosis joints and the amphiarthrosis joints and completely disregarding the synarthrosis joints. To begin, we will start with the skull. The the skull is famous for the synarthrosis joint or the suture. However, as we mentioned earlier, these are immobile joints, so we will be disregarding them. There are two types of mobile joints in the skull, the temporomandibular joint or the joint between the lower jaw, the mandible, and the sides of the skull. There are two temporomandibular joints. The other joints are the joints between the small bones in each ear. There are two bone-to-bone -bone articulations in each ear, adding up to four ear joints in total. After that we will move to the spine. The spine has 146 joints in total. We will start with the atlanto-occipital joint. We have two of them. These are the joints between the first vertebrae of the spine with the lowest part of the skull, the occipital bone. After that we will have the atlanto-axial joints. These contain three joints or three articulations. After that there is the intervertebral joints or the joints between every single vertebrae of the spine. They add up to 25. After that we will go to the Zaga Popfacile joints. These add up to 46 joints. After that, the costovertebral joints, or the joints between the ribs and the vertebrae. These make up 40 joints. After that, we move to the costal transverse joints. These make up 20 joints. After that we have the oncovertebral joints. These are joints between the oncanate process of a vertebra with the vertebra above it. They only exist in the cervical vertebra. They add up to about 10 joints. After that we'll move to the sternum and ribs. Firstly, there is the sternocostal joints. There are about 16 sternocostal articulations or joints in the human body. After that we'll move to the manubrium sternal joint, which is the articulation between the manubrium and the sternal body. There is only one manubrium sternal joint. After that we'll move to the sternoclavicular joints, which is the articulation between the clavicle bones and the sternum. There are two sternoclavicular joints. That add up to 19 joints. After that we move to the pelvis. There are 3 mobile joints in the pelvis. 2 sacroiliac joints which is the articulation between the sacrum and the hip bone or the iliac bone. And finally a pubis symphysis which is the articulation between the two hip joints. After that we will move to the upper limb joints. There are 12 upper limb joints. 2 acromioclavicular joints or the joints between the scapula and specifically the acromion with the clavicle, the glenohumeral joints, two of them, which are the shoulder joints. After that there is the humeral ulnar joint and the humeral radial joints, in other words the elbow joint. And finally there is the proximal radial ulnar joint and the distal radial ulnar joint. After that we'll move to the hand and wrist, which comprises of 86 joints. There is the radioscaphoid joint, radiolunate, ulnolunate, ulnotrochytrium, scaphoid trapezium, scaphotrapezoid, scapholunate, scaphocapitate, lunate capite, lunate trochytrium, lunate hamate, 
Trichotrium pisiform Trichotrium hamate Hamate capitate Capitate trapezoid Trapezoid trapezium And the articulations of the metacarpals The fifth metacarpal articulates with the hamate The fourth metacarpal articulates with both the hamate and the capitate The third metacarpal articulates with the capitate The second metacarpal articulates with the capitate Trapezoid Trapezium And the first metacarpal articulates with the trapezium After that there is the joints between each metacarpal bone Called the intermetacarpals There are six between the second metacarpal and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth. After that, there is the joints between the metacarpals and the phalanges, which more commonly known as one of the finger joints. There are ten metacarpal phalangeal joints. After that, there is the interphalangeal joints, adding up to 18. And finally, there is the articulation between the sesamoid bones and the metacarpals. There is two sesamoid bones that articulate with each first metacarpal bone adding up to four articulations. Other sesamoid bones do not exist in the vast majority of the human population. And when I'm saying vast majority of the human population, I'm talking about 80 to 90% of humanity. After that, we'll move to the lower limb. There are 10 joints in the lower limb. The acetabulofemoral joint, in other words, the hip joint. And after that, there is the tibiofemoral joint, which is the knee joint. With it, there is the patellofemoral joint, which is the joint between the femur and the kneecap. After that, there is the superior tibiofibular joint and the inferior tibiofibular joint. After that, we'll move to the final section in our list, which is the foot and ankle joints. There are 78 foot and ankle joints. The tibiotalus, fibulotalus, talocalcaneus, talonavicular, calcaneocuboid, naviculocuboid, naviculomedial cuneiform, naviculointermediate cuneiform, naviculolateral cuneiform, Medial intermediate cuneiform, intermediate lateral cuneiform, cubolateral cuneiform, and the fifth metatarsal bone articulates with the cuboid. The fourth metatarsal joint also articulates with the cuboid and also articulates with the lateral cuneiform. The third metatarsal joint articulates with the lateral cuneiform. The second metatarsal articulates with the lateral cuneiform also, and the intermediate cuneiform with the medial cuneiform. And finally, the first metatarsal joint articulates with the medial cuneiform. As with the metacarpals, there are six in intermetatarsal joints, which are articulations between each of the metatarsal bones. After that, there will be the metatarsal phalangeal joints, ending up to 10. Also, the interphalangeal joints of the foot, ending up to 18. And finally, two sesamoid bones articulate with the first metatarsal, ending up to 4. Any other sesamoid bones in the foot are an extreme minority. And that is our complete list. So, when we add all them together, they end up at 360 mobile joints in the human body. Therefore, the hadith is indeed scientifically accurate.